Okay, you two, I'm going to look at a special instance in this video in which we convert from a parametric form of the equation that involves trig functions uh, into rectangular form again. And it's often going to involve some sort of Pythagorean sleight of hand. So basically, what I want to do is I want to recall this right off the bat before we start anything else. Remember, sine squared plus cosine squared of the same angle, this is equal to 1. Okay, so when we look at a parametrically uh, defined equation like this one here, we say x is equal to 3 cosine of theta, and the y value of our point is equal to 4 sine theta. I think it's, uh, you know, kind of important to note that this really right here, if you were to take out the 3 and the 4, you've got some point that is just like cosine theta sine theta. So this is some point on the outside of the unit circle, essentially, which has a radius of 1. So we say radius of 1, here's my you know, unit circle. We say that this is some point cosine theta sine theta. What you're doing when you're graphing something like this, or you know what this would be, is essentially uh, some point on the unit circle where we've stretched it in an x direction three times the original distance here. And we've stretched it in a y direction four times the original distance up and down. You know, it's going to go off the screen. But essentially what you get is you get an ellipse, okay? So this is some parametric form of an ellipse. What we're going to do is, using this Pythagorean identity now, we're going to isolate, and this is what I would say write down, isolate sine of theta and cosine of theta in each equation. Then invoke the Pythagorean theorem. So we get this. Essentially, we could say if x is equal to 3 cosine theta, then we could determine that cosine of theta would be the same thing as x over 3. And if we were to say, you know, y equals 4 sine theta, dividing both sides here by 4, we get sine theta is equal to y over 4. So using this fact, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, then I know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And if I were to square my sine theta over here, we'd say, well, sine equals y over 4. So sine squared would be y squared over 4 squared. So we would say, okay, well, then I would get y squared over 4 squared is my sine squared. And if I squared cosine, I would get, well, cosine squared would be x squared over 3 squared. So we would get x squared over 3 squared. And you can see easily now that, of course, this is an ellipse. And as a matter of fact, you know, typically we would list it with x first. We say x squared, you know, this here. You can see that this would just be cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 if we listed it this way. But essentially, you could see that uh, with respect to y here, it's going to go 4 up and down and 3 left and right, which is kind of the same thing we had said over here. We're going to go 3 times that distance in that direction and 4 times stretch in this direction here. But that's how you would deal with something Pythagorean. Again, you know, like you, you every once in a while, you'll see something like this. x equals, you know, secant, secant theta and y equals, you know, 4 tan theta. And we could say, okay, well, now, now go deal with this. And these are actually just secant and tangent. Uh, you would basically recall that secant and, and tangent also have their own Pythagorean theorem and, and do the same thing. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's how you deal with it.